Smith. What's up? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. I'm going to try to raise my voice and talk because I am sleepy, but um, I'm committed to do this. So uh, here we are. It's going to be a good week. It's April the 1st. It's the start of a new month. Um, so yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a shake it loose and wake my own self up. I didn't have my coffee, man. I should have drunk my coffee. Uh, but anyway, let's get um, right into it. Um, we're going to start a new series that has been on my heart for a while now. Um, and the name of the new series is called Stay. Um, and it's simply talking about staying with God, staying with God. Um, the key verses um, that we're going to stand on for this series comes from John 15. Um, and it's two verses, but they really say the same thing. John 15, uh, verse 7, it says, But if you remain in me and my words in you, you may ask what you want and it will be granted. Let me go to King James. Let me go to the King James Version. Sorry. Again, John 15, verse 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done. Verse four says the same thing. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No, no more can you except ye abide in me. So um, I'm going to kind of free flow today. Um, <laughs> Again, the staying with God and um, my pastor said something one time and it blew my mind away. Um, as Christians in our endeavor, sometimes we we want to see people come to Christ, which we should. We want to see the unbeliever get saved. We should want to see people return back to Christ. But um, an even greater prayer that we should pray is not that people come but that people stay uh, because so many times, you know, people can walk away. People can fall away. The Bible says that in the last days, there will be a great falling away. So that's kind of the premise that um, I'm doing with this series. There'll be a ton of Bible stories and scriptures that we'll read through. That's just going to encourage us to continue to walk with God. And as the scripture says, we have Jesus here. In John 15, where he's talking about how the true vine, he's the true vine and we're the branches and we're um, supposed to be connected to him and being connected to him is the only way that we're going to bear the fruit, bear the fruit that he has called us to bear, the fruit of joy, peace, temperaments, and you know, the fruits of the spirit. And so many times we're stickler for those types of things, you know. I can, I can look at your fruit and tell you, you know, I can look at somebody's fruit and tell you what type of person they are. And, you know, so many times we're trying to bear these fruits, but we must understand that we cannot bear these fruits if we're not connected to him, if we're not in communion with him, if we're not in fellowship with him, if we're not in covenant with God, if we're not spending time with God, if we're not fellowshipping with God. The fruit of the spirit is only a result of our intimacy and our fellowship with him. We have to be connected to him. And so, again, we're going to be talking about staying with God, staying in his presence. The scripture also says, abide in me. This is Jesus talking. Abide in me and my words in you. Abide in me. Abide in in my presence, in my words, in you. That's why the word of God is so important um, when you're talking about fellowshipping with the Lord, and when you're talking about intimacy, and you're talking about staying with God, reading your word, meditating on the word, and allowing the word to come into you is so important. Watch this. This has nothing to do with your behavior. <laughs> When I say your behavior, I'm talking about your struggles. And y'all know I'm a stickler. I say this almost every time. We shouldn't be focusing on, on what we should be doing, but focusing on what we should be doing. 
I'm not going to say forget about your struggles and I'm not going to say don't try to be better. But at the same time, a lot of times, if you don't have enough word in you, then of course you're going to keep falling short. Of course, you're going to stay in the cycles. Of course, you're going to remain depressed. Of course, you're going to remain in those addictions. I mean, yes, we need therapy. We need deliverance. But a lot of this we can gain from the word of God. I promise you, if you keep putting this word in you, and I know it may be something you don't want to do, you don't feel like doing, I get it. But some things, Cheryl said something one time that blew my mind. Things have to become a discipline before they have to become a desire. We have to really take time to get into this word and just read it. Don't make it spooky. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it deep. As we can see here, Jesus said, abide in me and my words in you. If you're one of those people who's struggling, like, I don't even know what to read in my Bible. I just, just kind of like, be honest. Like, I, I've just kind of given up on it. I don't know where to go. It's not making sense. First of all, get you the good, a good translation. Start with the New Living Translation or the ESV or the Amplified start there if you don't know what to read read john 15 that that's a good place the book of john is very easy to understand the book of john the book of psalm the good book of proverbs um but get the word in you he says abide in me and my word in you what does that look like that looks like me fellowshipping with the lord and allowing his word which is the scripture from the bible to reside and abide in me. That means I must take it in, which means I must read it. And don't say you don't like to read because I know we read 1,500 comments on Facebook every day when some drama pop off. We can read. We read them emails at work because we get a check. We can read. <laughs> so let's not shortchange God. Let's not read all this other stuff when it comes to the word of God. We got these excuses. The same way we discipline ourselves to do other things, we can discipline ourselves for God. Uh, we should never give secular things uh, more of our energy and more of our attention than we give God. And if that's the case, that's all right. That's the whole purpose of this Bible study is, is, is to encourage us uh, to stay with God and to grow deeper with God. Because there's coming a day, y'all in the last days, there's coming a day where the enemy is going to ramp it up. There's going to be different things. There's going to be so many distractions. There's going to be so many things that's going to try to lure us out of the presence of God. It's going to try to lure us. It's going to try to take our affection. It's going to try to take our, our passion for God. And if we're not careful, it's going to be easy to slowly back up from the things of God. It is. It is. I'm telling you. And I've been in seasons before where I've, I've drifted away. Thank God for his compassion. Thank God for his love and his mercy. The Bible says it's his kindness that draws us to repentance. But the thing is, we have to be vigilant. And that's like I say, that's the purpose of this Bible study is to encourage us to stay. Point to yourself and say that I'm staying with God. I know there are so many people that are falling away. There are so many religions. People don't like church no more. People are mad at God. We have a whole demographic that's doing deconstruction of the Bible. We have some of these apps. They're uh, taking out certain words in the Bible. Uh, churches don't read Bibles no more. You know what I'm saying? People aren't standing on doctrine anymore. There are certain churches that won't allow you to say certain words in their congregation. Y'all, this, when the last days, the Bible says that people will have itching ears. There will be a great falling away. People will become disobedient. So my job, my burden for me, I just want to make sure that we, the people of God, the people I'm connected with, that I myself, that we're safe in this hour, that we are safe in this hour. Not that we're perfect, no, 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 but that we're safe in the arms of God, that we have a resting place, that we have a shelter, that we have an ark of safety, which is the word 
of God. So we have nothing to worry about because we have a safe place. I wish I had my Bible, but I got my iPad now. Um, but yeah, even even for me, like I have my iPad, I have my Bible, my Bible app here, but I got I'm looking at like three or four Bibles I got over there in my bookshelf. Um, so yeah, um, this that's just my burden. I want to see people stay with God. I want us to grow with God because there's there's just so much out here, so much out here. So I'm ending it with that. I just wanted to kind of give a premise of where we're going to be heading um, with this next series. But again, go back and read John 15. Um, read the whole chapter of John 15, especially the first 10 verses. But um, verse 7 is what we're going to be standing on. Again, he says, abide in me and my word in, in you. Ask what you will and it will be granted. So y'all stay with God. Abide in his presence daily. Seek him. I know you have your struggles. I know you have your agendas. You have your calendars. But take some time to really get in his presence. Take some time to allow his presence and his word to get in you. Why? So that you can remain fixed. When the enemy throws you temptations, he throws you trials because the enemy is not after your stuff. He's after your faith. He's after your belief in God. He's after your covenant with God. He don't like that you believe God. He doesn't like that. And so if anything that he can do to, to break that, he's going to do. He's going to put suggestions in your head. He's going to put doubts in your mind. He's going to help. He's going to encourage you to hate church hate church leadership. He's going to encourage you to do everything else and give God just a little bit. That That's his job. I'm tempted with that. I know some of you may be let, y'all know I keep it real, keep it honest, but um, let's, let's hold each other accountable and make sure that we're seeking God and that we're bearing his fruit. Only way that we can bear his fruit is if we're connected to him and we're connected to his word. And the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Give us the sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the spirit of God and the word of God goes together. If you want to feel the spirit of God, get in your word. The, word, the spirit of God is attached to his word. Amen. I'm ending here again. Stay with God. That's my encouragement to you. That's going to be our new series. And I hope everyone has a great and blessed Monday.